everyone. In this video, I'm going to be comparing two ways of defining absolute advantage. And just to give you guys a preview, at the heart of the issue is really whether or not we fix the amount of resources that each of our economic agents have. So I'll just start with what I think is the more common way of defining absolute advantage. So we're going to take two economic agents. They could be people, firms, countries, and we're going to say that, and I'll call this definition number one, agent one has an absolute advantage in the production of a good compared to agent two if, for a given number of resources, agent one can produce more of that good than agent two. And just to be clear, when we say a given number of resources, we're fixing the amount of resources to be the same level for both agents. So everyone gets the same amount of resources to work with. And so when we get some information on two economic agents, let's say country A and country B, and let's say that they can make two goods, good one and good two, and I'll just make a table here. This can be table number one, and table number one will tell us about the maximum number of each of the goods that our countries can produce. So the total product given, well, let's say 100 labor units. So that's the resource that we're fixing. And let's say country A can make with those 100 labor units at most 250 of good one or 400 of good two. And country B can produce 200 of good one or 500 of good two. Well, from our definition, in order to find absolute advantage, we would just look to see who is making more of the product. So just looking at good one, country A can make 250, country B can make 200. So country A has an absolute advantage, which I'm just going to notate AA to save space uh, because 250 is greater than 200. In terms of good two, country A can make 400, country B can make 500. So just applying our definition, country B has the absolute advantage in the production of good two uh, because 500 is greater than 400. They can produce more given those 100 labor units. So that's our first definition. It's pretty common and it's pretty straightforward, but we do fix the amount of resources that each of our agents have. We can drop this assumption, however, so you might get something like definition two I have up here. So agent one has an absolute advantage in the production of a good compared to agent two if they can produce one unit of that good using fewer resources. So you do see definitions like this kind of floating around. I will link in the description, I'll, I'll put um, references to different textbooks where you do find different types of definitions. And you might get the intuition here that in all of the important respects, this second definition is really just a restatement of the first definition that I gave. So to say that you can do more with a fixed amount of resources is just to say that you need less resources to make one unit, right? And I think that that's right, but let's show this kind of more formally. For instance, from definition one, we said that country B had an absolute advantage in producing good two because using 100 labor units, country B could make 500, but country A could only make 400. So let's normalize the amount that our countries are making to be in terms of one good. So, well, our table here has 500 uh, goods that country B is making. If we divide by 500, well, that kind of reduces that production amount down to one but we need to divide the number of labor that we're using by 500 as well. This will keep that ratio of labor to goods correct. So, well, 100 divided by 500, that's one fifth. So we can see here that country B uses one fifth of a labor unit to make one unit of good two. Likewise, country A, they use 100 labor units if they want to make 400 units. So we'll divide by 400. So we have in terms of one good, 100 over 400. Uh, we see that country A uses one fourth of a labor unit if they want to make one of good two. So using our second definition here, we can see that country B has an absolute advantage in producing good two because they use less resources when they produce good two. They only need one fifth of a labor unit, uh, but firm one needs one quarter of a labor unit and one fifth is less than a quarter. So we get the same result as when we used the first definition. We're just thinking about it in a different way and we're removing that assumption that both of our countries have the same amount of labor to work with. 
And so actually let's rewrite this in terms of a new table. This can be table two. And this table is going to tell us about how many labor units it takes to make one unit of each of the goods. So we've already done good two and we found that country B had an absolute advantage in the production of good two. So let's have a look at good one then. So country A can make 250 units of good one with 100 units of labor. We just want this ratio in terms of one good, so divide by 250, and we see that we have, well, 100 over 250 uh, is actually 10 over 25, so this is two over five. So country A needs two fifths of a labor unit to make one of good one. For country B, they can make 200 of good one if they have 100 labor units. Just normalizing that production amount down to one unit of the good, we divide by 200, and 100 over 200 is a half. So firm two needs a half of a labor unit in order to make one of good one. Using our revised definition again, we can see that country A has the absolute advantage in the production of good one because they only need two fifths of a labor unit in order to make one of good one, but, but country two needs half of a labor unit. So using our definition two again, we're getting the same results, uh, except importantly, we're removing that requirement that our countries have the same amount of resources. And so this second way of looking at absolute advantage is useful because of this, because in many cases we want to think about absolute advantage, uh, but our agents might differ in the amount of resources that they have. So if you want to compare a large country to a small country, for instance, you know, if you only understand absolute advantage, if you fix the number of resources, then uh, this can be tricky to kind of figure out. Also, I will say the first definition, unless we're careful when we explain it, it risks only focusing on total product. So when we find absolute advantage using the first approach, we only compare the total product. That's what we get the students to do. But that potentially misses the finer point, which is actually very clear in the second definition. Absolute advantage involves the ability to produce a product with fewer resources in comparison to another economic actor. The focus on total here is kind of a misdirect. The first definition, though, I will say if we want to compare PPFs, uh, sometimes it's, it's the case that uh, if we fix the number of resources, it's, it's more useful to compare PPFs. Not always, but it depends what we're looking for. But for me, at least, in definition number two, I think gets to the core or the heart of the issue uh, more directly, I think. All right, that's the video. I hope that it helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well.